On Wednesday morning, it was reported that eurozone inflation spiked by a record 5.1% in January, up from 5% in December, and stunning economists who had anticipated a 4.4% drop. The key drivers of inflation in the 19 nations that used the single currency were, as in the UK, increased energy costs, which grew at an annualized rate of 28.6% during the month, according to the European Commission's statistics arm, Eurostat. Unprocessed food, whose price climbed at an annualized pace of 5.2% during the month, was also a major contributor. However, there are also dilutable within the eurozone. It's also notable that German inflation was 5.1% last month, down from 5.7% in December and a near 30-year high of 6% in November. Inflation in Germany, the eurozone's largest and most significant member, was 5.1%, in keeping with the zone overall. Hey, welcome back to Economic Insiders. Give this video a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel, it's free. Now, let's move on. Tensions between Germany and the ECB seem to be easing when Jens Wiedemann, the chief of Germany's central bank, critic of the ECB's loose monetary policy, resigned in October last year. Concerns are growing in Germany that, unless the ECB acts fast, rising inflation will feed into larger wage demands, creating an inflationary cycle. The German population, in particular, is concerned about inflation, and its broadcasters are all too willing to criticize the ECB on the situation. Build Germany's best-selling daily notoriously mocked up an image of Mario Draghi, Miss Lagarde's successor at the ECB, with fangs and a cape while referring to him as Count Dragula, and roaring, the nightmare for German savings continues. Meanwhile, in France, the cost of living soared at a pace of just 3.3% during the month, which will be particularly favorable to Emmanuel Macron as he pursues re-election in the April presidential elections. In the rest of the Eurozone, inflation is already alarmingly high, at 7.6% in the Netherlands and 8.5% in Belgium. Worse, inflation in two of the three Baltic nations is running at 12.2% in Lithuania and 11.7% in Estonia, where the central bank has warned of an inflating property market and an economy rising so quickly that production capacity is exceeding its limits. All of this poses a big dilemma for the ECB, which, has a 2% inflation target like the Bank of England. However, while the Bank of England has begun to raise interest rates from their all-time record low, and the US Federal Reserve is scheduled to do so next month, the ECB has no plans to do so anytime soon. It is not even scheduled to terminate its 1.85 trillion euro pandemic emergency purchase program, PEPP, its most recent form of money printing, until the end of March. Christine Lagarde, the ECB's president, said, We're all in very different situations. The cycle of economic recovery in the U.S. is ahead of that in Europe, so we have every reason not to act as quickly or as ruthlessly as one might imagine with the Fed. She said that raising interest rates too soon would risk putting the brakes on growth. Lagarde's point emphasizes her pride in the united approach taken by European nations and policymakers to deal with the economic fallout from the coronavirus pandemic and keep it from plunging into a repeat of the region's 2012 debt crisis, which threatened to tear the currency union apart. However, the ECB faces its most difficult test yet. After monitoring the largest monetary stimulus injection in the history of Europe's single currency, including the 2.2 trillion euro purchase of mainly government bonds and a similar amount of heavily subsidized loans to banks, the central bank is now ready to begin withdrawing its support for the economy. Most central banks have already initiated to dismantle the extensive support programs they deployed to lower borrowing rates and protect economies from the pandemic's aftermath. However, the ECB, still haunted by criticism for raising interest rates too quickly during the last crisis, is more hesitant than most to withdraw its assistance, suffered for years with persistently low inflation and slow growth. Now, managing the recovery phase will need a delicate balancing act by Lagarde and her colleagues as they attempt to avoid the mistakes made by the ECB when it abruptly hiked interest rates in 2011 just as the region's debt crisis was flaring. However, if the ECB takes a while to reverse its stimulus, 
it risks losing credibility and being forced to make even more severe policy adjustments in the future. This might happen if inflation does not return to the bank's main target of 2% as quickly as expected, despite having already reached a new eurozone record high of 4.9% in November. Even though debt levels in the eurozone have reached new highs, experts say a catastrophic crisis is less likely to occur this time. This is primarily because the EU currently has a significantly more favorable macroeconomic situation as a result of the establishment of an 800 billion euro recovery fund. This novel strategy allows Brussels to issue debt centrally and distribute funds to member countries in order to improve their post-pandemic economic prospects by investing in new green energy and technology initiatives.